It's as iconic to London as double-decker buses and the Queen. Boasts over a million square feet of selling space and 330 departments. As of this weekend, it has a new owner. Qatar Holding will do their best to upgrade this monument to make it even greater and better for the tourism and also uh, for the British people. Harrods is just the latest asset to fall into the hands of the oil and gas rich Qataris. They already own a quarter of Sainsbury's, Britain's number three supermarket, and 20% of the London Stock Exchange. They're the largest shareholder in Barclays and hold a stake in Songbird, which controls more than half the buildings in Canary Wharf. The sale brings to an end 25 years of ownership by Mohammed Al Fayed. Just weeks ago, the Egyptian, whose son Dodi died alongside Princess Diana, said he'd never sell. Instead, he wanted to be entombed in a mausoleum on the store's roof, like a pharaoh. There's one reason for the U-turn. This was a, a great uh, legacy that Mohammed has built out, the preeminent pre luxury goods uh, retailer in the world. He wanted it to go into the hands of uh, a long-term investor who had the vision for the future. Outside Harrods, shoppers didn't seem to care either way. It's still Harrods at the end of the day. Well, as long as it's not English, it doesn't really matter who owns it, does it? Harrods is it's history, you know. <laughs> So this bag with you is, is means something. Buying Harrods for 600 million pounds back in 1985 was never enough for Al Fayed to be accepted into the British establishment. In 1999, Home Secretary Jack Straw refused him a British passport on the grounds that he wasn't of necessary good character. That same year, he won a libel suit against politician Neil Hamilton, whom he said he'd paid to raise questions in Parliament. Harrods' new owners are unlikely to be so colorful. Eric Coleman, Bloomberg News.